A common confusions on Sandel's 10th and last chapter, Injustice, What's the Right Thing to Do, might concern his four recommendations for a politics of the common good, as he calls it. The first implication would be mandatory national service. Sandel argues that the public schools are not on par with the private schools, and so you have different segments of the population being educated in a segregated fashion. He argues that military service is is way down, so you only have a very small percentage of the country having that shared experience as a military service member or a veteran. And so he argues that in the name of solidarity, in the name of exposing citizens to other members of different cultures that are at the same times, at the same time members of the same citizenry, that we should have some sort of a mandatory public service. Now maybe this could be the Peace Corps or Teach America or some new institution, but the purpose would be to bring people together to cross-pollinate those those subcultures within the country and at in that way expose us to those various ways of life so we can appreciate those backgrounds build relationships and friendships with Americans who aren't necessarily from our community or our our religious tradition and improve both social solidarity and national stability but also facilitate our roles as social animals, as as beings that need that sort of interaction in the, the political sphere in order to flourish and, and behave consistently with our purpose. Our Tilo, which of course is all consistent with the Aristotelian communitarian approach. The second pillar would be limits on the influence of markets in other spheres of life. Earlier in the book, and then it's reiterated here at the end of the book, Sandell considered paid surrogate mothering, considered being able to, to pay mercenaries to take care of your, your military service. He even considers a, a policy whereby persons could pay $100,000 to become a citizen. And he thinks that we should think long and hard and carefully about whether or not we allow the market norms to influence areas of life where they, they might not necessarily be appropriate. And he thinks that we should have a public discussion about placing limits on market type thinking and that we should be very careful in that regard. We don't want the, the capitalist ethic to infuse itself with anything and everything we do, even though it may be very appropriate and useful and just in market type circumstances. The third pillar would be taxation of the wealthy in order to provide more of a, a framework and an infrastructure of public venues where citizens could come together and uh, improve civic, civic friendship and discuss issues. What does he have in mind as a, a simple practical matter? Well, maybe you could have better public rec centers, public pools, maybe you could have better public parks. Maybe if you had a, be a better public transportation system, people from various economic levels would be more likely to use it rather than, in many cases, the poorest of the poor. Although when I lived in Washington, D.C., almost everyone, regardless of their socioeconomic status, used the metro rail subway system because it was just the, the quickest, most convenient way to get around town. Sandell thinks that we, if we were to invest in those sorts of, of public services and opportunities, then people would be more likely to discuss issues with one another, to befriend people who are not from their religious and subculture background, and that this is essential to our nature as, as uh, social political animals. And the last pil pillar would be more open discussion of moral questions in using and, and in discussing these issues, he would encourage the, the usage of comprehensive doctrines or religious arguments. The liberal, libertarian, Kantian, Rawlsian, Nozickian approach to political questions and political philosophy and laws and policies would downplay those those comprehensive doctrines and it would encourage us in the public sphere to discuss those issues in neutral terms citing values that anyone could endorse and using uh, public language citing values and reasons that anyone could endorse regardless of their, their background or their religious commit, commit convictions or lack thereof Sandell argues to the contrary that we ought to bring our religious perspectives to the public forum and use them to think through various issues. And he thinks that this free flowing of, of, of ideas might be the best way for us to make progress in general and also make progress in interpreting and understanding our own religious and uh, a religious perspectives and backgrounds.
So there you go. The, the four pillars, that's the culmination of everything he's argued in the book. That's his practical recommendations. I hope this made those just a little bit clearer.